On January 15, 2022, at 4.28 p.m. local time, the Hunga Tonga Hunga Ha'apai volcano in the nation of Tonga produced its most powerful explosion ever recorded. This explosion sent a sustained plume of ash to a height of 30 kilometers or 98,000 feet into the atmosphere. As this explosion triggered a magnitude 5.8 earthquake, one of the largest landslides in recorded history occurred. As much of the volcano's edifice slid into the ocean, it generated an energetic tsunami which went on to cause damage to locations as far away as Japan, California, and Peru. Meanwhile, residents as far away as Alaska heard the associated explosion as confirmed by the National Weather Service. Now that the eruption appears to be over, or at least decreased for the moment, we can take a look at what the island on which this volcano is based now looks like. Although ash particles may be obscuring radar telemetry, it appears that more than 95% of the original 4km or 2.5 mile wide island from January 13th has been destroyed. Not only was all of the central edifice of ash which connected two more sturdy islands destroyed, but the majority of the northeast and parts of the western island are also gone. Thus, the vent which produced the January 15th eruption is no longer above sea level, and the Hunga Tonga volcano is now almost completely a true submarine volcano. I can with confidence say that this event was the single largest volcanic eruption of the last decade. However, since a volcanic explosivity index rating which measures the eruption size won't be definitively made for several weeks at a minimum, it has led to a large degree of speculation. Many news websites and experts are suggesting a wide range of eruption sizes ranging from VEI-4 to VEI-6. Based on the available evidence, I think that the eruption was a mid-end VEI-4 and I will explain why. When looking at a volcanic eruption, there are several useful factors which can help to approximate an eruption's size. These include the thickness of ash which fell at a specific distance, the amount of sulfur dioxide released into the atmosphere, and the peak height of the eruption plume. The reason many people are making high estimates is they look at the 30km eruption column height, compare it to historical eruptions, and place the volcano in the VEI 5-6 to range. However, those people are forgetting the geologic setting of this volcano. Hunga Tonga is a primarily submarine volcano, and the abundance of ocean water at shallow depths greatly amplify the size of the explosion, making the eruption plume be far larger than if the same eruption had occurred in the middle of a desert. Using a mathematical formula, we can get a figure suggesting a large VEI-4 or small VEI-5 eruption. Now, let's look at the amount of sulfur dioxide released by the eruption. Sulfur dioxide is released during all volcanic eruptions, and the amount of erupted magma whether through flows of lava or fine ash is closely aligned with the amount of gas measured. Using NASA satellites, the amount of sulfur dioxide released by the eruption totals 400,000 metric tons. While this is a large number, it is only a fraction of sulfur dioxide comparatively released by recent VEI-5 or 6 eruptions. Comparing the figure of 400,000 tons to recent smaller volume VEI-4 eruptions such as Calbuco in 2015-2016 and La Soufre in 2021, you can note that there's a near-perfect match. Thus, I estimate that the eruption ejected around 0.35 cubic kilometers of volcanic rock. While the immediate eruption is seemingly over, there is a warning sign of more events to come. Several scientists noted that in the geologic history of Hunga Tonga, the volcano produced a caldera forming eruption sequence every 1,000 years. These sequences did not contain a single eruption, but rather several over a closely spaced period. Thus, more similarly sized eruptions and tsunamis are likely over the next decade. As a final note, the edifice of Hunga Tonga is still unstable, so more tsunamis may occur over the next several days to weeks. Thanks for watching. If you would like to request a specific topic, please leave a comment below. Additionally, I would like to thank my new patron Colin Rose for supporting this channel.